Hi, I'm Helen McAteer and today I'm joined by Professor Catherine Smith and Dr. Satvir Marhill from the St. John's Institute of Dermatology in London, who are the principal investigators on SoProtect and SoProtect Me. So where can we read the full results um, and conclusions from both SoProtect and SoProtect Me projects? Well, uh, the detailed findings and conclusions that we've just been talking about now have already been published in two peer-reviewed um, scientific publications, one in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology and the other in the British Journal of uh, Dermatology, and links to the plain language summaries uh, and infographics of these papers um, can be found on the Saras Association website. Thank you, Helen, for hosting that information. And also on our SoProtect uh, websites as well, on the, on the tab under current data. And actually also just as an ongoing effort, we, we do update the, the findings from SoProtect and SoProtect Me on the website under the current uh, data page at the beginning of each month. Great. Um, so are there any findings um, yet that haven't been published? Yes. So we've just completed uh, another analysis of So Protect Me data. And this time we focused on describing the impact of living with psoriasis in the pandemic. So um, we analysed information from 4,043 individuals with psoriasis. And these are individuals without COVID and people from 86 different countries participated, 55% of whom were from the UK. So a significant proportion, 43% of participants reported that their psoriasis had worsened during the pandemic. And so then we looked into factors that may be associated with um, worsening psoriasis. And we found that um, worsening psoriasis was associated with anxiety and depression. And this is a really important finding given the mental health burden that we've seen in the pandemic. And also considering that people with psoriasis, we know more frequently suffer from anxiety and depression compared to the general population. We found that worsening psoriasis was more commonly reported by females and in those with other health conditions such as obesity. And individuals who didn't take their prescribed tablet or injection medicine for psoriasis more frequently experienced um, worsening skin. And this was compared to those who continued their medication during the pandemic. And we learned that the commonest reported reason for stopping medications was that people were concerned over the impact of the drugs they were taking on their risk of COVID. Yeah, of course. Um, how do you hope these results will make a difference for people with psoriasis? I think there are three really important messages that come from our results so far, which, which are relevant directly to people with psoriasis to think about, but also healthcare professionals looking after people um, with, with the psoriasis. So I think firstly, um, most people with psoriasis who develop COVID infection recover well, and the drugs we are using to treat psoriasis don't seem to pose any major problem insofar as the data we have to date. And I would say there's lots of ongoing research and, and we hope that you know we'll, we'll be able to provide a bit more specific detail around that. But in general, these drugs are not, don't seem to be a major problem. And so we really hope that people with psoriasis will find this information reassuring. And the data that um, Satvi has just mentioned from the So Protect Me um, registry that indicates that many people, you know, are stopping their drugs because of worries about COVID. And so we also hope that these, these data will kind of trigger clinicians to explore concerns with their patients about whether or not they are continuing with the treatments and, and why, why they aren't. And perhaps clear messaging from clinicians around the reassuring data that we have so far. And, um, and the other thing we hope around this message is that we, we really hope that people with psoriasis feel kind of empowered to go and speak to their clinicians about their concerns and ask questions. One of the things actually that's been really positive with the So Protect Me registry is that there's been a lot of comments and people saying that they feel part of a community and it's it's been very sort of helpful to them when they're perhaps feeling a bit isolated. So I think the first message is it's reassuring data. That's really important. Um, the second message is um, that, you know, 
social distancing and shielding do re reduce the risk of, of COVID. Our findings from um, on the shielding behaviours in people with psoriasis really showed the importance of strict social distancing measures and um, also highlighted what seemed to be quite significant inequalities between the treatment groups. You know, people with uh, biologics and standard systemics are behaving in different ways. So we also hope that that will again stimulate conversation between clinicians and patients. And I think the third key message, which has really come out of our most recent analysis, is that people with psoriasis, a subset of them anyway, are really struggling with their skin and their mental health during the pandemic. And actually, we've that's been reported in other chronic um, uh, conditions as well. This has really had a big effect on people. It's mm. gone on for a very long time. And that's a very important message for healthcare professionals and providers to know about and for people with psoriasis to speak up about and, and, and get help. So we, we hope that, you know, that these, these data will, will drive that conversation and, and stimulate and highlight the importance of kind of holistic care for people with psoriasis, including, you know, getting access for psychological support. Yes, it's so, it's so important, as you've just highlighted, it's, it's been a long 12 months um, since um, our first lockdown. Could you outline the next steps for the project? Yes, I mean, in short, there's still lots to do. <laughs> there's an awful lot we don't understand about the impact of the, of the pandemic and um, the, the longer term effects of um, major shifts in healthcare, mental well-being, and also, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we've still got you know more specific. Um, data to accrue and uh, to get better understanding around the medications that we use and the specific risks um, associated with that. So we're going to continue to collect data in uh, So Protect and So Protect Me as Satvia um, has outlined. And we're actually also hoping to um, ask participants to provide longitudinal information. So if you've already contributed, please come back and contribute again. And we're setting up a sort of longer term study where we're going to be inviting people up to three times a year uh, to provide information because one of the things we've learned with so protect me actually is the power of asking patients directly for information we've actually not done it on this scale before and the findings have really been important and so sort of cutting out the middleman if you like in research and asking patients directly so that that's really our our, our focus and I, I would say also that we're just so very grateful um, to everybody who's contributed. Uh, and we do know that the finding has had, had an impact uh, and we've had findings from SoProtect being taken up into national and international guidance. So um, it's been a really important and, and uh, rewarding project to work on actually. And we'd also, Helen, like to say thank you to the Saras Association, as well as all our other global partner organizations. We absolutely could not have done it without you. And yeah, it just shows the power of uh, collaboration and we're feeling very positive about the future and, and the potential of platforms like SoProtect for our research beyond the pandemic. Well, thank you so much um, from everyone with psoriasis for all your hard work throughout the pandemic. Um, it's been really reassuring um, for patients to, to know that there is research being done in their specific area. And I think the, um, the response has, has been great, but as we've touched upon, we still need more people to take part in So Protect Me um, and, um, and also So Protect. Um, but thank you so very much for giving us um, the insights that you have today. And um, hopefully we can have another catch up.